Okay, we're going to try another quick scene here using um, kind of mixing and matching a couple different sets here or stamps from different sets. We're going to be laying down some tumbled glass reinker fluid here from uh, Ranger. Uh, I don't know, people usually refer to Distress as the brand, but it's really Ranger here. Okay. I am getting kind of a uh, background established here with this light ink. We're going to cre be creating two fields of um, lighting, okay? And by doing so, we'll create um, our light source and the reflected light down below. Now, this would probably be a little bit easier in terms of um, kind of the notion of what you're doing by stamping out your imagery first, but kind of in this quick scene, Right here, I want everything to go very quickly. Um, when it comes to <laughs> being able to apply the ink, so I don't want to stamp my images on here in black ink or in colored ink, and then have to wait for it to dry a little bit or to heat set it, and then start toning it. Okay, so I'm just doing this kind of ahead of time, which you can certainly do, or you can do this as a background. And then you could uh, stamp your imagery and then fine-tune your toning um, afterwards, okay? So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, as you can see, I just have a, just a wadded up paper towel. These work very <laughs> nicely in terms of their um, absorption and transference uh, ability. If you want something to be, um, to be able to um, transfer it first needs to be able to absorb, right, or to take in um, the medium. Okay, so I use that um, reinker fluid first, just because it makes things go a lot faster, okay, when you're doing this type of thing. Things don't have to be perfectly applied and absolutely smooth and without streaks or without, you know, little edges showing from the paper towel and such. You know, it's not uh, necessary um, by the time we stamp our imagery in here, okay? Okay, so that is that. We have our cloud cumulus here. And we're going to add this in. We'll go for several impressions of it, okay? I'm going to change your angle with each impression, okay? Now the area that you left um, light or white is the light part of Cloud. All right, we're going to go for the Seaside Cove here. You might not associate the Seaside Cove with kind of like a lake type of um, image, but it certainly could be used as one. It just depends on what you put on the horizon um, of it. Okay, now I'm going to use the Lakeside Cove up here, so I'm going to wipe off the top portion of this. Think about like so, and we'll stamp this in... I'm not stamping it completely on the bottom, but you certainly could. It just depends on where you stamp your clouds. Now, I'm going to stamp that uh, lakeside cove right over the top of it, okay? So, I'm going to ink it up like that. And what I'm going to do is where it overlaps into the seaside cove, I'm going to wipe off the bottom portion of this so it, it will blend in with the seaside cove very nice all right i have my deer ready to go here that i think i'm going to use on here all right so go like that and we'll do it again we'll just wipe off the bottom portion like that okay and i'm overlapping into my previous impression if i'm going for a, like a five minute scene i I should probably use my seat, you know, Lakeside Cove large and just get one impression that will cover it from edge to edge. But let's go with these stamps right here. All right, so we have that. I can stamp another cloud down there too if I want to. All right, so we have that. Now, uh, let's go ahead and let's do fill in that little area down there with an additional cloud. I want that cloud to be kind of coming up right from the horizon. All you have to do is mask off like that. We'll take our cloud and we'll stamp it out again. Just go like this and go. You don't need to mask off your trees because they are solid black, okay? 
see how that kind of filled in right there? You can even do a uh, kind of a ghost impression of it too if you want. Um, a little bit of this cloud texture down in that water right there. I just want a little peekaboo, a little texture of it right in that spot. Yeah, so it's a little bit more mirrored that way. All right, so looking at that, I'm at the uh, five-minute mark here, but um, I'm not necessarily going for a five-minute impression <laughs> or scene right here, but let's try to keep it going, keep it, uh, you know, a pretty quick scene. Let's go for a little bit of extra blue up here in the corners, okay. Let me see how that kind of just frames things off a little bit more, like so. Kind of around the, uh, the trees I'm going to dab, just so I don't accidentally streak and smear some of those images. The images, you know, they're, they're pretty wet right now. Dye-based inks do dry just fine, so you don't need to worry about um, you know, something not drying. This is glossy paper here. I'm going to hit some of this down in the shadow areas so that the rocks are casting a shadow, the trees too. Something like that. I'm going to come down here, bring that down like so. See how this kind of darker um, color is just kind of framing things off really nicely. You can also come into it with like something like a alcohol pen, you know, a Copic marker. You can Go right in here and add some kind of fine-tuning uh, toning to your scene if you want. All right, so we have that. Why don't we do that? We're doing a quick scene. We're not going for anything too crazy, but, you know, fast. But like something like this, what I'll do is I'll come into my Seaside Cove and in the shadows underneath the, you know, the, the crest of these little you know, wave peaks or white water or whatnot, I'm going in and just kind of reiterating the shadows that are on the designs themselves, okay? You can hit it up here in the shadows, you can come into the rocks. I'd leave the tops of the rocks a little bit light so that it looks like they're being toplit. That doesn't blend in perfectly, so you can get your, either your blending pen Color, or just go with a lighter version of that given hue, which is blue, and blend that in like this, okay? It's really easy. You, know, you just kind of blend it in, kind of move things around a little bit, move your inks around. I wouldn't say this is this glossy paper. You know, it's not putting, you know, that ink completely back into solution, but it blends it around enough. That, if you want to put a little bit of a kind of a greenish tinge on some of these rocks or something of that sort, just you know, to kind of warm them up, put a little moss on them or whatnot, you can do that and bring some of that into your water as well. Kind of analogous colors placed next to each other, or in this case, kind of on top of each other, kind of make the surface glow a little bit. Analogous colors are the colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. All right, a little bit more blending. My fancy ink applicator, I'm joking. So, kind of hitting that up like so, kind of making it a little bit darker. You can even put a little pink up here in the sky or something like that in the uh, white area if you want to. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's see. Let's go with some reeds down here in the foreground, or you can come into this with a, you know, a little bit more of a, a bolder image with the um, pines and rocks, and also is in nature set number nine. Maybe I'll use both. So that, those reeds down there kind of give everything a little bit of depth. Let's go with the. Let's go ahead and go with the. Uh, um, the pines and rocks here, these represent larger versions of the uh, same type of imagery that's used in the background here in the form of the lakeside cove trees. Okay, let's have this up here. 
you can use a versifying clair or something like that for your foreground imagery to make it look even bolder if you want to. I was thinking about using this deer in here. I don't think I will. But maybe I will. I don't know. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll tell you what, speaking of the clair, I think I'm going to go for that. All right, these are a couple of the pines and rocks. But let's go ahead and use that clair. The, the pigment inks are a lot darker. You know what I mean? It's a, just a thicker ink in general. It's a pigment ink. Dye-based inks work by staining. Pigment inks um, sit on the surface of the paper, and they're just a lot thicker. So see how deep and black that is? I like making my objects in the foreground um, the darkest. Something that's closest to us, and what that does is it pushes the objects there in the background even farther back. And that creates depth, visual depth in your piece. Okay, so I tell you what, in my scene, to me, it seems looking a little, oh, bare, especially up in the sky there. That'd be a good place for uh, like a quote stamp or something. I would stamp, well, you could stamp it in black right over the, uh, the clouds if you want to, but let's go for something like this. I have a bird flying in the foreground. Be careful with that versifying clair. It's very, very slippery, especially on your freshly stamped scene that has a lot of uh, uh, ink already laid down on it. So you're stamping kind of a slick ink onto a you know, semi-wet background. Okay, this one, these birds right here, I'll put in um, dye-based ink, so they're a little bit lighter. Eh, I don't know, they're pretty dark right there in terms of the imagery, but, you know, by tone, tonally speaking, they're probably a little bit less uh, so. All right, now, on this right here, to me, from a visual standpoint, I think I could use a little bit of textural changes. And let's do that with my Brilliance ink. White, okay? Now where can we do that? I probably should have done it up in the sky before I stamp those birds, but I'll just kind of avoid the birds. Okay, so these clouds up here in the white area. Okay, a little bit too much ink on here. I'm going to blot it off. I'm going to add some of this in those lighter areas of those clouds. And be careful not to go over your eagles, or just do them before your eagles if you're uh, kind of following along with me. I'm sure I got a little bit ahead of you. But um, adding this down like so kind of really makes those white clouds really glow. Okay. And it makes them nice and soft. It gives them that, you know, texture in which, you know, clouds are made out of. They're made out of illuminated, or well, well, they're made out of, uh, you know, there's moisture in there, but this is the light that's hitting it, so it really makes them glow kind of uh, soft like that. And where I also like this is down in my water, okay, so I do it in the lighter area where light meets dark, and I like to have it coming off the surface of my lake so, and that makes a really great textural um, contrast with all of the sharp imagery, you know, sharp imagery in terms of a uh, nice crisp imagery, you know, that you're stamping out. We always want that, but it's nice to have a few little areas that are just um, a complement to that, so soft and crisp together and by placing them you know kind of within the same space of a scene like that it makes the crisp seem sharper and it makes the soft even softer by relation and see that right there <clears throat> the most distant trees I knocked down with some of that ink so don't they look more distant you know the smaller in there the more they get and then right up here you see that kind of softer area of the uh, the clouds, and right over here too. We can add a little bit down here too, maybe 
this area down here could use a little bit of it. See, I'm not adding kind of a th real thick layer of it. It's just kind of a, a, a thin, translucent layer. So you see, you know, the blue from the background showing through, but didn't that change kind of the spirit of these, this impression right here of the clouds? Okay. All right. That is that. We're um, contrasting soft against sharp in terms of the imagery. My white paint pen here will go in and contrast um, sharp light against soft light. So these are little tiny just dots. Again, I'm putting, where am I putting it? I'm putting it at the crest of the wave. The images themselves are light in certain areas, okay? And you can see little dots that I've already kind of drawn into the designs. It's in the rendering. It's that spin drip coming off the crest of the wave. But I'm not doing these little dots in the darker areas. I'm doing it in the lighter areas, you know, areas that I didn't tone out so dark. You know, you wouldn't have reflected light kind of reflecting on a dark area because there's no light in that area. So areas that you retained some of the lightness of the paper. Okay, now another area. See these rocks in here? These rocks, I mean, they're okay, but now see where I've left some of them light up there? Let's go in and really push that light. And I have to be careful that I don't put my hand in the, uh, in that clear. Let's see this right on top of some of these rocks. And look what that did. It illuminates those little rocks in there. Or, I don't know, they're probably big rocks, but they're distant ones. And I'm putting a little bit of highlighting on the top of them. So it makes them look like they are reflecting the light. They're being top lit. Like that. So that kind of give it a little bit of more um, kind of illusion of depth. And it reiterates lighting. All right. So anyways, quick scene. Not too long, 17 minutes or so, but that's all the tricks in there. You know, we'd used uh, dye-based inks, we used alcohol inks, we used pigment inks in here, we used pigment inks to stamp our imagery in, we used pigment inks to um, add soft lighting in here, we used acrylic paint to add in um, little highlights. So. There's a lot of little tricks in here that we've done. We've, you know, the, I don't know, pretty much the kitchen sink is in here as far as the different types of things that I use. I didn't add in, like, little crystals or something like that in there. But pretty much all the, you know, kind of the foundation steps to using this, you know, are all in here. If you're using this on something like a holographic paper, then you can, you know, you don't even have to do all the, uh, the colors in there, and you would have kind of an inherent lighting. But, you know, you're controlling light, through the use of shadow, areas up here are darker, retaining areas of light down here. So you see that area of light up here and the area of light down here. So that's my um, little trick that I do on, I don't know, it's a, it's a huge percentage of my uh, scenes is just two areas of light like that. And I do have a, a video out there called, um, I think an easy lighting scheme or something like that. It's just basically having an area of light up here, an area of darkness through here, separating that other area down here. And it's like two little balls, sometimes the larger one. It's bigger on the top. If it's a small moon, maybe it's a small little area of light up there, and a larger one down here. Sometimes they're symmetrical, you know, or kind of uniform in terms of, you know, equal sizes of light. But that's just the way, you know, it's just an easy way to do lighting, especially when you're doing you know, a quarter page card scene, you're not going to have like five areas of light usually on, a, you know, such a small quarter page card. It's usually two. It's light source and reflected light down there. How do you do that? You just separate the two regions with a darker area so they become two different areas of light instead of one. All right, so anyways, another quick card. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section. Thanks as always for watching. And as always for tuning into the Stampscapes channel.